Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now, longtime subscribers to the channel may remember that early on in its history, I made a couple of videos about moving tombstones. And while those mechanisms work well, the big question I always got was, what do we do if we live in a place where it gets rain during October? So in this video, I'm going to answer that question by modifying my rocker mechanism to be a bit more weatherproof. So let's get to it. I started the build with a small piece of plywood that would act as my base and a single plastic gang box, which is meant for housing electrical outlets and switches. I needed to mount the box to the base, so I marked out where my screws would go in the bottom of the box and pre-drilled the holes to make it easier to attach. Then it was just a matter of screwing it into position. Next up is to get the motor installed. This synchronous motor fits perfectly inside the box, but will need a hole added so that the motor shaft can pop out the side. Once again, I reached for my drill and created a starter hole. Then I switched over to a step up bit to enlarge the opening. After a quick test fit, it was time to make a template for the motor mount holes with a bit of tape. This way I can transfer the spacing to my gang box to make sure that they're in the right spot. Then it was a bit more drilling, and then I could install the motor with a few nuts and bolts. With the motor in place, it was time to make the first part of the crank mechanism with this piece of flat stock aluminum. I'll need to add a 90 degree bend, so I threw it into my vise, grabbed a tiny hammer, and slowly bent it into shape. It's important that you take your time with this step, since aluminum can get very brittle if you make your bend too quickly. Off camera, I cut down the piece to its final length and added a hole one inch from the bend, and a second hole that lined up with the hole in the motor shaft. Then it was just a matter of attaching it with this tiny bolt and nut. With most of the motor part taken care of, I could switch to installing our pivot point, starting with mounting a two inch hinge to the edge of our base. As with most parts of this build, I'll pre-drill the holes to prevent the wood from cracking when I add in my screws. Once the first set of screws are tightened down, I'll grab a 12 inch one x two and we'll repeat these steps for the opposite side of the hinge. This will give me a structure to attach a prop to. It was at this moment that I realized I had made a mistake. I needed to offset my motor from the hinge so that it would align properly with the 1x2. So after a quick adjustment, I'm back on track and can move forward with the build. The last part of this mechanism comes in the form of this 10 inch aluminum bar. It just needs a few mounting holes. That's better. This gets attached to the 90 degree arm with a bolt and lock nut and the opposite end is attached to the 1x2 with a wood screw. With everything connected, I can grab an extension cord and some wire nuts and wire up my motor. I can tell at this point that the aluminum bar is mounted too high on the 1x2. So I wait for the motor to reach full extension before unplugging it and adjusting the location of the bar so that I get more forward movement. The mounting location is completely dependent on what kind of motion you're trying to achieve, so there's no perfect spot for it. 
A bit of trial and error will help to narrow it down until it's exactly where you want. Now that I'm happy with the movement, it's time to close up the box. But first I want to add a hole for our extension cord to go through. These boxes have holes in the bottom that can be punched out for wires. But if you're in a place where you get weather, you'll want to use a bit of caulking to close up those holes to make this a bit more weatherproof. Adding the hole closer to the top will minimize the possibility of the box filling up with water should you get rain. Now that the cord is attached, I can stuff all the wires inside the box, close it up with a cover plate, and it's ready to be used. Now you can use this mechanism for more than just rocking tombstones by changing its orientation. But considering that most of the parts can be found at your local hardware store, I'd say this is a win. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, go make something. Mm -hmm.